Today we're going to be covering how you can implement a random forest classifier within Python with the help of scikit-learn. Now before we do start coding, there's a few things that you should know. The first is being a decision tree since they do make up a random forest classifier. Now a decision tree is what you see in programming, those trees that are either like a one or a zero, yes or no. Now outside of programming, it might be like, did you run today? Now I ran this morning super early, 5.5 miles, so that would be yes or one of the decision that came out of the tree. Well, in a random force classifier, there's going to be multiple decision trees. So like imagine you're asking your friends, what race should I run next? And they all tell you, yes, you should run this 100 miler in 2024. Well, that's the outcome of the random force classifier. I'm going to be showing you guys how you can do this at the very basic level. And then I'm also going to be taking the difficulty up a little bit and adding in some hyper parameters. Some of those being an estimators, criterion, min sample split, max depth, as well as random state. All right, let's get ready to code. All right, let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is import pandas as PD. So put that in here, shift and enter, runs a cell, and builds a brand new one down below. And uh, now we're gonna build out our data frame. So we're gonna say df equals PD dot read underscore CSV. And then we're gonna put a CSV in here. Now I'm gonna use the same one as my decision tree video, which is 500 hits. I do have this under my GitHub, so feel free to download it. And if you guys want to see more uh, data on my GitHub, let me know some of that code that I use in these videos, if that is helpful. I'd be something like 50-50 on adding it or not. All right. Also, we have to put it in coding line one. Otherwise, this won't work over here. And um, you don't have to do that all the time uh, for CSVs, but on this one, how I pulled that data initially. So just to show you what this looks like, we're going to do a DF head. And essentially we have different baseball players, 500 to be exact, top 500 hits, and if they end up making the Baseball Hall of Fame or not. Um, that's the classification that we're gonna be working on, right? Zero, not a Hall of Famer, one is a Hall of Famer. Now I am gonna drop a few columns because they aren't really practical to use. Uh, so I'm just gonna do df equals df.drop, and we'll put over here columns equal, and we're gonna put the player name uh, because that shouldn't impact our model. And then we're also going to put CS, which is caught stealing. I don't think there's any impact of caught stealing on making the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, stolen bases do count, but no one's really looking at the caught stealing and determining a player shouldn't make it or not. Uh, so I'm going to shift and enter that runs over here. And then I'm going to split up the data between our X and also Y. So we're going to say X, which always when you're doing models, make sure it's capital X, just very common to see. We're going to do a DF.I lock. And then over here, I'm gonna put a colon, and then we're gonna say zero through 13 for the first part, right? It's gonna grab all this information over here, minus this player in CS. And then we're gonna grab our Y, which is lowercase. Again, a little confusing at first, about df.i lock, colon, and then 13 over here. And then we both have our X and Y, which is great, right? And just to show you what these look like, X over here, right? And then if we put Y, have that. Cool, cool. All right, this is working. And um, first thing we're gonna do is train test split. So let's add in a few new cells down below. And we have to import this in. So from sk learn the model underscore selection imports train test splits. Now that's imported. Next thing you're gonna do is set up x train and y train as well as testing. So x train. X test again, capital X, Y train, Y test, right? And then equals train test split, capital X, lowercase y. I'm going to say random state of 17. Make sure you put this in here. I thought we can copy my exact results. That's what essentially what it does. And then test size equals 0.2. Uh, that means we have 20% in our testing set. We're going to have 80% in our training. And if you're not familiar with train test split, just please stop this video and watch the train test split video uh, because you should know this before running any specific models. It's really critical to be honest with you. Uh, we're going to shift and enter. Now this runs over here and now we can start working on our classifier. So I'm going to say from SK learn ensemble import random forest classifier, right? And then we have to call our random force. Now for the first one, I'm not going to put any hyper parameters. We're just going to go 
everything default. So all I'm gonna do on this one is super easy, right? RF equals, and then you can literally just copy random forest classifier over here and you just called it, right? Super, super easy. Like every other type of model, you have to fit your data next. So we're gonna do rf.fit. And when you're fitting your model, you're gonna be using your training data. And that's why we set up X train and also Y train. So we set that up over here. Okay. And then you can see that this populated, which is great. Next thing I'd recommend is building out your prediction. So we can say Y pred like this. You see it all the time coded out. And we'll say rf.predict and then put your X test. Now I'll explain how this specifically works. So we have our X and Y test, um, but this one essentially, if you run in your test over here, you're trying to see what that prediction is. And then you can take a look at the difference between the Y test and also Y predictions, uh, just to see how your model is working correctly. And you can do that through your classification report in confusion matrix, and I'll show you that in a second. But regardless, that's why we're doing Y prediction over here. So remember you have your training, you have your testing, and then you have your final prediction uh, when you're running classifiers like this. Okay. Hopefully this all makes sense. Uh, we're gonna do a basic score just to see how this model performs. And in this one, you're gonna do X test, and then also you're gonna do Y test, right? And you can see right now is 0.82. Now this is a lot more accurate than the decision tree. Random Forest tends to be a little bit of a better model we talked about in the intro, uh, but we're also gonna tweak this a little bit. Uh, I also wanna show you a classification report real quick. So from sklearn.metrics, import classification report like this, okay? And then you can just print this out. So print, and then we'll just say our classification reports, this. Then you're gonna put in your Y test, then you're gonna put your Y predictions, and you can find out a lot more data, right? Your precision recall F1 score, and then how this data was essentially split up over here 0 0.82, 0 0.83, 0 0.83, and this takes a look at both zero and one, uh, which our classifier has over here, right? Baseball Hall of Fame or not. So overall, pretty good, but we can definitely get a little bit better. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is take a look at some of the features. So we're gonna say features equals frame, And then there's something called feature importances. So all we're gonna do is importances underscore here at the end. And then we're gonna say our index on this one equals x dot columns. And then this should populate if I do a features over here. So features do dot head 15, it'll show everything, right? And you can see like what features were the most important with this model. So you can see like hits, runs, at bats, all played part over here. Home runs, not as much, which is kind of interesting. And then you do have RBIs and then also batting average, uh, which batting average actually had the biggest amount, right? 0 0.139. And batting average, like, it's okay right now. As a metric in baseball, uh, people were trying to move away actually from batting average, um, but a lot of baseball players were kind of inducted in the Hall of Fame based off of batting average. It's definitely an older, old school metric. With that in mind, let's take a look at some of the hyperparameters. So I'm just going to put hyper parameters over here and we're going to define this as rf2 and we'll see if i add in some hyperparameters if this is a little bit more accurate so we can just say again random forest classifier and then we're going to open this up over here and we'll start going so we'll first start off with estimators estimators and set this equal to a thousand another thing is you can set up your criteria so criterion and then I'm gonna set up entropy, but it's not one by default. And put that over here. And then we can have sample split. So min samples split, set that equal to 10. Another one that we can have is the max depth. So max PTH, I'm gonna set this one to 14. And lastly, we can have a random state, just like what we did with train test split. So random state equals 42. And these are all just common hyperparameters that I see uh, with random forest classifiers. So just put them in over here. Again, super basic in the beginning. We just called it with no hyperparameters and we put this over here. 
And something that's really cool with machine learning is you can actually uh, work on these with hyperparameter tuning, but that will be another video in this series. So shift and enter. And because I built out that pipe on accident, it didn't work, but now it does, which is good. Like earlier, we're gonna fit this data. So rf2.fit, you put over here x train and also y train, right? Now this should fit our model. And then you can see everything that we put over here, right? Our hyperparameters now populates in comparison earlier, which nothing was getting populated. And we can just take a look at our score real quick. RF2.score, put X tests, Y tests, right? And we have 0 0.849 in comparison to where we had 0 0.827, which is always good to see. Okay, and then you can also do y pred2 equals rf2.predict. And then we'll put over here x test. And then I just want to see this classification report. So print classification report. And then you'll throw in here your y test. Then your y prediction2, y pred2, just like this. And now you have your classification report, which you can see this is definitely a way better model. Um, this kind of scares me a little bit, 0 0.69 and 0 0.76, uh, but just overall better. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for a lot more data science videos and also machine learning. I'm uploading over three videos a week right now, and these aren't the easiest to make. By the way, the next video you should watch is this one over here, which we talk about a logistic regression. You will enjoy that one as well.